Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you how to play Sally Goodin. Sally Goodin is one of the best known southern fiddling tunes and it's a great contest tune. I'm going to give you uh, at least five different versions, starting with the simplest and ending with the fanciest. <laughs> There's plenty to challenge you uh, with this tune, but the, the simple version is really quite easy. It's played in old time music particularly, and as I say, in text style, context fiddling. Uh, Eck Robertson recorded this way back in 1922, I think it was one of the very first country music commercial recordings and he did uh, I think around a dozen variations on that as he was playing. Uh, it's got lots of words to this uh, as a song, um, words such as I love pie, I love pudding, crazy about the girl they call Sally Goodin, um, and uh, endless variations on that. So let's start off with um, the basic tune, but before that I'm just going to tell you if you want to keep these videos coming then do please consider joining me on Patreon. Okay, so basic tune, uh, it's in the key of A, and we're going to do it with no drones, one, two, three, So there are endless uh, small variations even on this simple version. Uh, let's just do that again slowly and with the backing. Part of this is the last bar of the first line, where you're going from first finger, keeping your first finger on, and playing a stretched third finger. If you find that uh, that particular bit is holding up your progress with this tune, then just simplify it. And that is a general policy for any tune that you are learning. If you can play everything in the tune but one bar or half a bar then don't let that half a bar stop you from playing the tune. Uh, find a simpler way to play it and just do it like that. And if you think that's too much of a cop-out, then at the same time as, as you're playing your simplified version, for the next few weeks or months or even years, then you should be practicing <laughs> that one tricky bar. And eventually the two will coincide, you'll be able to stick the tricky bar back in where it belongs. Okay, now the first thing I think we will do to this is simply to add open string drones. If you're not sure how to do this, uh, look at my video called Open String Drones. But basically we're going to do, uh, we're going to do almost all of the tune on both the A string and the E string at the same time. If you're not sure about which notes to drone and which not to drone, um, you certainly don't have to drone every single note. And some drones work, some notes work really well droned and some don't. So you can just dip in and out of it. And um, when you've been doing this for a while, then you'll just kind of do it automatically and you won't have to think very much. And if you do get some, some real discords like, like that, then as a passing note it really doesn't matter very much. Um, it's only if you dwell on notes like that that it sounds bad. 
Okay, um, now the next variation on this actual melody is the fourth finger drone. So this is where you put your fourth finger on the same note as the next string up. So most of it is going to be the fourth finger on the D string playing an A. And um, depending on what your fingers are like and what your hand is like, there's a danger that your little finger is going to touch the next string up, it's going to touch the A string and stop it from playing cleanly. And if that happens, what you have to do is to make sure that your wrist is well up so your finger is pointing vertically down and not pointing down at an angle. Um, this is something I learnt about 30 years ago and I didn't take it seriously. <laughs> so for about 25 years I never practiced this thing at all, which is why I'm not very good at it. But it is very important in this tune and in this kind of tune. So what we're going to try and do is to keep that fourth finger on almost all the way through the first time, the first line. And, and we're going to do a bit of the same thing on the E string on the second line. So just try this. So there's a danger of it being slightly out of tune and there's a danger of um, deadening that A string. Okay, when you get onto the next line, you can't do as much of it, but you can do some with the fourth finger. Particularly these three notes. So the rest of it we're doing with open string. Let's try that with the backing. Okay, uh, the next version is similar to that one in that it's using a lot of four fingers. This one comes from Craig Duncan's Master Fiddle Solo Collection book. Um, so it's all of the melody is slightly different, um, as is typical of these kind of variations. We're starting off with a C sharp over an A, so two over four. And if you're spending five minutes trying to get that in tune, then it's probably a good idea to abandon this lesson at this point. Um, okay, so we got... Uh, I've actually written it out with the drones and the melody, which is really quite hard to read. So, in fact, the first thing I will do is to play this version of the melody without the drones. One, two, three, four... If you look at, for example, that last bar, um, the notes we're going to play are... And uh, it's difficult to tell what, which is actually the melody and which is the drone. So that the melody is... So on, on that, we're playing both E and A on both notes, but we play more E on the first one and more A on the second one. Okay, so I'll, I'll play it really slow with the double note.
So I think you'll agree that's not easy. Okay, uh, now the next and final variation is it goes up into third position and uh, this is quite a lot easier than it looks as long as you know how to do third position. So again I'll give you the melody without the drones to start with. We're starting off with the first finger on the E string playing an A and holding down uh, through most of this line. One, two, three, four. Now notice that the second line is a variation on the first line, as is the case on the next two lines as well. So um, we'll do that with a drone now. So we've got an open A all the way through. One, two, three, four. In both cases we're going down to first position for the last bar, and then up again. Okay, let's just do that again, one, two, three, four. And because this is um, basically on one chord all the way through and just using the same fingerings, um, if you do your own variations it might actually be e easier than trying to learn all of these of someone else's variations. And I do think that the, this third variation is easier than the second one because of, it, you don't have to do that four finger work. Let's do this once more and then we'll do it with a different set of chords. Now one of the great things about Texas contest fiddling is uh, that you get to be accompanied by a guitarist who can do amazing things. Uh, I was lucky enough for, a long, for many years to work with a, a guitarist, Frank Kilkelly, who could do just this. And I was always amazed by how he could turn a one chord tune into a masterpiece of accompaniment um, just by what he did. And Band in a Box, it doesn't come very close to this, but it, it does come a bit close. Uh, with a particular version. So just have a listen to this and you'll see how one chord can turn into many. So I just love playing over something like that. Um, I'm going to put that on and have a go at, uh, I think I'll try the, this third variation.
Okay, hope you enjoyed this. I think there's enough to keep you working on this for quite a while. If you'd like a copy of Ollie's Dots, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email. And if you'd like to get hold of a zip file with all 350 of my PDFs, then join me on Patreon. And for a mere £4 payment, uh, it can be just one month if you want, then you get all of those PDFs and a whole load more besides. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for watching.